A lot of what we do in bespoke orthopedics footwear can readily be seen from the outside. For instance, if you look at this shoe, you can see the shape, that it's hugely distorted, that there's this big uh, bulbous toe there. That's all apparent from the outside. You can see we have a returning Velcro strap because his hands are as arthritic as his feet are, and so he needs that assistance to do it up. You can see the cushion collar, which is supporting his ankles. On this shoe, you can see from the outside that it's an ankle boot, that it's supporting his ankles. You can see the sole and the type of tread. You can see the heel. All of that is visible uh, as to how we're helping the client. What's not so visible, and what I want to talk about now, are the stiffeners, the insoles, and the toe puffs. These are elements that go between the upper and the lining. Even the lining you can see when you take the shoe off, and, and a lot of people, they try to cut corners by putting cheap linings in, but with ours we have very, very good quality uh, leather linings, but they can be seen. What can't be seen is when we put something between the lining and the upper, or between the uh, sock lining and the sole. All of this is stuff is hidden, but it is pro probably some of the most important elements of a bespoke orthopedic shoe. Let's start with the stiffeners. The stiffeners, here's a short stiffener, um, they go between the lining and the upper, so that's about to be lasted up on the last and pulled on like that. So before that's lasted up, we open the lining and we put the stiffener inside, we put some paste, shoemaker's paste in here, put the stiffener inside, put more paste in, and then put the lining against the stiffener. So what we get is lining pasted to stiffener, pasted to upper. And when that's shaped on the last, it um, takes on a 3D shell shape that is very, very strong. Okay. So let's look at the variety of stiffeners. Stiffeners uh, start off, it's a piece of oak bark belly leather, and when it's wet, it's totally malleable. This has been soaked for quite some time. And so it's shaped to fit onto the last, and you can see here it's a long stiffener, so it's going to go all the way around the outside and all the way around the medial side, the lateral and the medial side, and you see how that's going to support the foot all the way along. And that's good for somebody with, say, hypermobility, because it really contains the foot. Another use for a long stiffener is in a court shoe, or a shoe that's open all the way down. But you can see the stiffener. See, that's really soft and flexible, and that's really stiff. The stiffener stops the shoe blowing. A lot of court shoes, cheap court shoes, you see, when the the person takes a step, you see it opens like that. Whereas with the stiffener, it's held really close. And so with the foot filling in there, the uh, shoe doesn't blow. It just uh, bends and moves with the foot. So the stiffener in there is a very, very important element. So stiffeners start life as wet leather. They're cut to shape. And you can see how, with a sharp knife, we can actually skive it. And uh, so what we're doing here is we're making a, the leather that tapers to nothing. So it's, it's absolutely fine line, so that it goes right down. So you can, when you rub your finger over it, you can hardly feel where the leather ends and where it starts. So that can be shaped. We shape it on the other side for where it's going to go around the last. And when we've uh, spent a lot of time shaping that with the individual in mind, then you can see how when it's caught between the upper and the lining and it's all pasted up, it forms this shell which when it dries becomes very, very firm and supportive. So the shape of the stiffener is also a prescription element. There's a long stiffener. We can also have a long stiffener on the medial side that's a short stiffener on the lateral side. 
Often people with collapsed arches have a lot of swelling around their ankle. As the uh, foot collapses, it gets stretched on the inside, but it can pressed on the outside, and this can be very swollen. So we're supporting the foot with a long stiffener on the medial side, but only have a short stiffener on the lateral side, so we don't hurt the swelling, uh, the puffiness on the shoe. So you can see how uh, that simple difference, just cutting out that piece of leather there, can make the difference between a comfortable shoe and an uncomfortable shoe. This is a medium stiffener. Again, it's a bit lighter, a bit less supportive, but again, a really, really good solid uh, stiffener uh, for making a shoe that we want our, you know, shoes, people are paying a lot of money for these shoes. We want them to last for uh, tens, 10, 20 years. Um, a short stiffener. This is the stiffener that's in just about every shoe you buy off the shelf. One reason it's a short stiffener is not because it's good for you, but because it uses very little material. And being so short, it doesn't even have to have a left or a right. It's just use the same stiffener uh, for the uh, left foot as for the right. So very, very cheap. Uh, and because it's not seen, nobody wants to spend money on a stiffener because, uh, you know, people don't know what they're paying for. But with our customers, they really do know what they're paying for because it's the feel of the shoe that's as important as the appearance. This is a stiffener for a Haglund's bump. So Haglund's bump is an osteophyte on the bottom of the Achilles tendon that's very, very sensitive and painful. One of the things we do is people will buy a ready-made shoe and bring it to us and we'll do some open... Uh, open quarter surgery where we open up the shoe and literally cut the stiffener out. But on this one we've actually made it so that that's very, very soft and open and then the rest of the foot is held very tightly um, so that that Haglund's bump doesn't get disturbed. So it just shows you, you know, there's more than that, but those are a variety of stiffeners and that's just one element of your prescription. Each one of these can be made very light. You know, I can, uh, if it's too heavy, I can thin it down with a sharp knife like this and see if I can get the weight down. Stiffeners are, uh, are quite a big contributor to weight. But see how light that shoe is. It, um, and yet it's still got a long stiffener in it. Another element is the toe puff. So when the upper is lasted up, the lining is lasted up first, and the upper is pulled back, and then the toe puff is it's put on wet and cemented into place, and that creates the toe box over the toes. It gives it the shape, and then the upper is lasted up over that. And so uh, this shoe has a toe puff in it. You see the nice shape there. It's by fine-tuning the toe puff that you can get the most elegant toe shape but it's also very strong and supportive. Again, in here, a very light toe puff. If we're doing an industrial shoe, we can put a steel toe puff on. So it's a toe cap. So uh, very, very hard and protective. And the other extreme is a wall toe puff, which goes around. And this is for where there's hammer toes and sensitive areas here where the toes are in danger of being damaged. And by putting the wall around, it gets all thinned out, then the, uh, the shoe becomes very soft in this region and the wall just keeps the shape up. Of course, if you have like a thin moccasin shoe, you don't have to have a toe puff at all. But that's an entirely different uh, principle of shoemaking where you, it's almost like a leather sock on top where the, the, the shoe is so soft that the toes literally make their own shape. So toe puff, very, very important element. The bit that you stand on is called an insole. Not a lot of people see their insoles because on top of it goes a sock lining with the label on and everything like that. And that's the bit they see. But this is the actual backbone of the shoe. This is the bit that the uppers are attached to underneath, the shank is attached to, and ultimately the sole is attached to as well. 
So the way we make these is very important. And like the stiffener, the insole begins its life as a piece of shoulder, oak bark shoulder leather, and it's wet and it's very, see this, this leather does whatever I want it to. You know, it just puts it there and stays there. But when that dries, it'll hold that shape. So what we do is the uh, bottom of the last has been very carefully shaped. This is really carefully worked out, uh, comparing it to the cast of the foot and the biomechanics that's needed. So in effect, this insole is made to the cast, which is made to the last. This insole is behaving like an orthopedic orthotic. So it's ex taken exactly the shape we wanted. It's held with rivets in place. And when it's dry, it then... See, see where the rivets were, taking them out? When it's dry, instead of being very soft and malleable like that, it's now very firm. And this, then I can get a knife and I can uh, carve it to shape. Begin to shape it and shape the turned up insole. And when it's still on the last, I can, uh, you know, do this bit here so that it's nice and, yeah. So I'm actually creating a shape, an arch support that um, is going to support the foot. Now, cutting it out under there. You see how I can sculpt that to be just right for the, uh, for the client. And uh, it's also keeping it light. I don't want to have a lot of weight in it, but you can see how that's supporting the client under there, whereas that's a normal insole that you would find in most footwear that actually doesn't support the arch at all. Another thing that we do a lot of is this insole has had the front scoured away. You can see there's the leather still there, but if you look in there, you can see there's a cushion so we've scoured it away until it's only half a millimeter thick and then we put a cushion in so that the front of the insole is very soft and very bendy and very malleable and very very kind to the foot whereas the back we've reinforced it with steel shanks and doubled it up and so that the back is really really strong and rigid and supporting so that's what an insole does is it contains the back of the foot that you stand on and gives you flexibility and softness on the front of the foot so that one has been very very particularly designed for someone who's got a metatarsalgia, we could put a metatarsal bar under there, for instance. It's got very sensitive toes. Other people, it might be that their big toe is so arthritic that it's painful for it to bend, in which case when we've lasted up the shoe, in here we could build up layers of carbon fiber cloth and resin maybe five or six layers deep, so that the shoe becomes absolutely rigid. So just like this, it's rigid all the way through. And then we would put a rocker so that the person can walk without the toe having to bend at all. And that can make a difference between someone uh, not being able to walk from one end of the driveway here to another and them being able to walk 15, 20 miles uh, because the they can walk smoothly and easily without the toe having to bend. And that's all done with the insole. So those are three elements, the insole, the stiffener, and the toe puff, that n people know very little about. They probably don't even realize they exist, uh, but hugely significant in when writing and making the prescription uh, for a bespoke orthopedic footwear.